What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name is Michael Roman and today we're back with everybody's favorite anonymous leaker, the source that had so many things right before Avengers Endgame and now with an absolute doozy that when we finally get the X-Men and the Fantastic Four in the MCU, they'll primarily be based on their 1610 Ultimates counterparts rather than the normal 616 continuity. We're going to break down this tweet, who it's coming from and why you should put some more stock in it than the rest, and what it says about the lead roles for both the X-Men and the Fantastic Fantastic Four, and of course debunking one specific storyline that's been rumored to be in play for Marvel Phase 4. We're going to break it all down, but first, if you could grab the subscribe button. We're giving away two PlayStation 4 Pros, the next of which is at the 650,000 subscriber mark. We should hit that by tomorrow or the next day, as well as this insane one-fourth scale XM Studios Beta Ray Bill. If you want to be entered to win, all you have to do, hit the subscribe button, then hit the notification bell, leave a like and a comment on this video, and if you want, stick around to the end of the video. We'll get into all the giveaway stuff again there. So real quickly here at Everything Always, we hold a special reverence for those industry insiders that are willing to put their name on their news, let it get re-reported as headlines, and then stick by what they say. And you know their names, we've reported on them a lot. Everyone from friend of the channel, Mikey Sutton, Jeremy Conrad over at MCU Cosmic, Charlie Murphy, and the like. We normally won't issue a spoiler warning because again, it's getting re-reported in all the normal spots and has become ubiquitous usually by the time it runs as news here at the channel. When it comes to the anonymous stuff we always tell you guys to take it with a grain of salt but maybe the one exception is Roger Wardell because he falls into a gray area now while his Twitter account is anonymous and Roger Wardell is for sure a different name he has two specific accounts the first of which a full five months clear of the release of Avengers Endgame in December 2018 was pegging insane details like the recreation of the elevator scene Hal Hydra coming from Cap Fat Thor Robert Redford's cameo and the list goes on so Normal spoiler warning and or reverence for this industry insider, whomever Roger Wardell is out there. Remember to take it with a grain of salt, but also he has been super right in the past. Knowing that, the normal spoiler warning, if this is in any way going to ruin the future of the Fantastic Four and the X-Men for your experience in the MCU, back out now, you've been warned. So as we mentioned in the prologue, this tweet, which is rather short, has enormous implications and reads word for word as such. MCU's Fantastic Four and X-Men will primarily be based on their Earth 1610 counterparts, that's the Ultimates universe, John Krasinski and Giancarlo Espinito in talks to portray the leading roles Ultimatum will not be adapted into the MCU. And with so much packed into just three sentences, let's go one by one. Now with the X-Men as far off as they are in the Fantastic Four much more imminent, and when I say imminent, I mean in the next half decade, the implications for the storyline coming from 1610 tied to one specific character that seems to be at the center of it all and present throughout the entirety of the Infinity Saga, General Thunderbolt Ross. Now in the brief origin story and history from the Ultimates 1610 Fantastic Four, it's actually General Ross that recruits a young 11 year old Reed Richards. They have a project set up with the best resources and teachers they can over at the Baxter building and their sort of recruiting child prodigy. From what we already know about Thunderbolt Ross and his ties to the Black Widow storyline, it seems as though he's at the center of a lot of things and trying to control all the would be future powerful people. What does that say about him specifically in his drive for power? But that's a totally different video in the arc for Thunderbolt Ross. Regardless, they end up coming together at accessing the end zone, the negative zone, which we all know is a place, the birthplace of Annihilus, which leads to an ultimate storyline where it's the beginnings of Ultimatum. Now, you may remember here at the channel and in a video, I'll make sure to link at the end of this from just a week or two ago, Industry Insider Jeremy Conrad indicating there may be a production grid for the Ultimatum storyline, which starts here in the Ultimates run like Roger Wardell is saying, and it's Doctor Doom basically pulling the strings the entire time from behind the scenes. He's also the one who's responsible for altering the device that eventually gives the Fantastic Four their powers. Either way, Roger Wardell has gone out of his way to make sure we know with no confusion that this is not leading to an ultimatum storyline. And that's what we argued in our original video, that it was going to be a little hard to do this because of some of the main players like Magneto not having yet been introduced, some of their alternate versions for their arcs. But it makes a lot of sense because this is what the MCU has always done. Even though they may base the storyline and the characters loosely on their 1610 counterpart, Parts, they've always sort of drawn from different versions of the characters. Heck, they've even made amalgam characters, especially for some of the supervillains like Hela or Ego. There's no qualms with using what they need when they need for characters or their narrative that sort of tailors them to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And since they're only really going to get one shot, 
shot at this and you can't include every side run in every multiverse universe that was done in the comics. It's a great way to do it, honestly. You can pick and choose the best parts of every character as long as it leads to a succinct storyline. And I think a lot of people read these characters, especially like Reed Richards and Doctor Doom, the same regardless of what storyline they're in. Yeah, some of the details change, but the sort of nature and the arc for those characters is somewhat intact. You know Reed Richards and Doctor Doom, regardless if you're reading 1610 or 616. Now, speaking of which, the other half of this tweet, the X-Men from the Ultimates universe and the mention of Giancarlo Espinito as possibly taking up the lead role. Now, there was a very early rumor. When we say early, we're talking about summer of 2019, almost a full year ago, that he was possibly up to play Magneto. But if his name is listed here alongside John Krasinski as an analog for the lead role over in the X-Men, then Giancarlo Espinito would be up to play Professor X, which I think he would be very well suited for, even though we're used to seeing him in roles like Gus and or from the Mandalorian as sort of the arch villain and he does sort of have this very creepy and very terrifying stillness to his character act I think it still would be an awesome awesome Professor X seems to be what Roger Wardell is implying here but regardless for those fans who are worried of getting a different version of the X-Men than the 616 the team that we want to see the 1610 doesn't read too much differently just like the Fantastic Four origin it just updates some things changes a couple of details but you still get the same friendship lingering friendship between Professor X and Magneto you still get a lot of the same members of the team it's not too different that you couldn't go ahead and add something like a Wolverine a Gambit or a Cyclops but what I thought most interesting when I read this that They'd be adapting certain parts of the ultimate storyline was the use of the savage land by professor x and this was a super old rumor and leak i believe again coming from mikey sutton last year and i haven't had a chance to follow up with him i sent him a dm while i was making this video he hasn't hit me back just yet. Pretty sure Mikey Sutton said that there's a chance that Savage Land was coming for X-Men. That's a part of the Ultimates run, especially where there's a difference between what Eric thinks he's found in Savage Land and what Professor X, Charles Xavier, has found. One is using it as a reprieve and a place to train. The other is using it to build an army. And that's obviously the divergence in what they want to do with their mutant collective and how they view themselves in regards to the rest of the human race. Again, that sounds exactly like the 616 run. All all of the same elements that make these storylines what they are, especially to the old comic heads, are still intact. You don't have to worry about some sort of butchering of the original story getting alternate motives. These characters sort of read the same and have the same intrinsic characteristics that we've all know to come and love. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments about all of this, specifically the fact that, well, some of these castings like Giancarlo Espinito up to play Professor X and or have you read the Ultimates run? Are you guys fans and do you think that some of the elements of the storylines will be better suited in the MCU rather than trying to stick to some of what may be outdated especially for the Fantastic Four and that original 616 run. Let me know all your thoughts down below in the comments and quickly, let's get into the giveaway stuff before I let you go. We're still giving away two PlayStation 4 Pros, the next of which is at the 650,000 subscriber mark. We're right around the corner from that, about 4,500 subscribers away. If you want to be entered to win, all you have to do, hit the subscribe button, then leave a comment down below. The more videos you comment on, the better chance you have of winning. Make sure to hit the notification bell with notifications turned on and leave a like on this video. Now that'll automatically enter you to win all of the rest of the prizes that we're announcing here at the channel over the next couple of days and weeks going forward, including this insane X. M Studios 1 4 scale Beta Ray Bill statue. Now, if you're not into collectibles, if you don't keep up with companies like Sideshow and XM, these may be new to some of you, but they are absolutely immaculately detailed representations of some of your favorite Marvel characters. This one in particular, measuring at almost 30 inches tall. It's over two feet. Again, 1 4 scale. And if you've never seen these things in person, they are absolutely awesome. I recently acquired this one from the Gem Mint Collectible Store, and he actually did a full in-depth review of this statue. If you want to follow that, I'll make sure to link it somewhere on this video or in the channel. You can find him over at Gem Mint Collectibles. Either way, guys, if you want to be entered to win, this is the prize at 750,000 subscribers as we make our way up to a million, and all the same rules will always apply for all of the prizes we announce. Hit the subscribe button and make sure to be a subscriber here at the channel, then leave a comment down below on this video because it's truly random. The more videos you comment on, the better chance you have of winning the best way to do that is to hit the notification bell with notifications turned on to make sure you keep up to date with our content and drop a like on the video guys my name is michael roman this is everything always thanks so much for checking out the channel those of you who have been rocking with me for the last couple of years i cannot thank you enough for your support and if you're just finding the channel stick around we post everything marvel related everything from the most anonymous 4chan plot leaks that 
could be real and sometimes do come true, all the way to the official stuff coming from Marvel announcements, trailer breakdowns, and Easter eggs. Thanks for checking out the channel and stick around. We'll be posting again real, real soon.